Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're getting a Christmas update on the water box. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. First of all, happy holidays. Hopefully everyone had a wonderful holiday little break. And yeah, today we are gonna do a bit of an update on the water box. Now the poor tank was actually asleep and it is after midnight now, so I did turn the lights on about 20 minutes ago. So this is starting open back up, but it was definitely, definitely sleeping for a little bit there. Um, so overall, things are doing pretty good as usual. There was a slight issue I had with my salinity, got way lower than it should have been. And I'm not sure if it was a mix of the auto water change or if it was dosing a little too much with the kelk. So I am gonna have to recheck everything, but I did spend the last few days bumping my salinity back up to 35 PPT. And for the most part, things are okay. There's two things I did notice. The little orange encrusting one, that one's definitely faded. And I did lose a little bit on that guy right in the middle there though. But all the edges seem okay, so I'm hoping that will go back over. So given how low it got, which was in the 20 somethings, instead of 35, that's not too bad. Um, fish wise everything, so generally fish can go down a lot, go down lower a lot quicker than they can go up. Um, so what I did is, I turned off my ATO for the past four or five days and I've just been topping off with salt water. So as it evaporates, it slowly lets, brings the salinity back up. So I did that over four or five days. Um, coral wise, aside from those two, everything else appears to be doing pretty good. So hopefully there's no other long term benefits. Now historically the Apex probe has always been a little flaky to me so even though I saw it off I kind of ignored it which obviously I shouldn't have done. Um, so I will definitely pay a little more attention to it going forward but historically it's never been super accurate for me so I kind of basically ignored it and there's part of the fallout so always double check it. So most of the fish still a little sleepy now from the lights coming back on. A few of them are starting to pop out. Um, under the stand, a few little changes. So a couple changes down below my kind of dosing system. Um, so if you know in the frag tank, the now shallow goon tank, I pulled out the calc reactor and the calcium reactor went to dosing. So I decided to take the bigger calc reactor and move it over to this tank. So in order to fit it, I did have to take out the second calcium reactor chamber. Um, so that's off for now. Uh, I did just use a stock hole in the stand to kind of feed this through it. And for that, I used these little ice cap skimmer stand and I'm using that to kind of elevate this up. Now inside, uh, I did have a mirror inside of there because I did notice there was starting to be a bit of wear on the bottom of it from the pill over time, especially doing like a bit of the slurry where you're spitting it, the stir a lot more frequently. Um, so what I did this time, now I did have a mirror in there and the coating on the mirror started to kind of fade away and fade off and I don't know if that's going to have a negative impact on the tank so I did swap it out. I finally found just a, a circle disc of glass which I just bought a picture frame and took out the glass and so I put that in there so hopefully there will be no kind of follow from that one. But so we got the calc stir in there and it's dripping at about one mil per minute I believe I have it set to. Might be 0.8 but I think it's one mil per minute. So I got this set up to stir every half an hour or so for one minute and otherwise that just doses and does its thing. Now in the sump I also do have a little power head so down here we have the Nero 3 and I have this in just so when the calc drips in it just mixes it up right away. Um, that way it just prevents any build up and it is a little more of the slurry side of things which it's kind of in the middle right now it's super clear but mixes up and just makes sure nothing kind of settles inside. Media wise, it's definitely you can see a bunch of the new ones. I did steal a good chunk of the media out of there to put into the new Shell Lagoon tank. And I had a few more new bricks that I just threw in there. So a lot of that media has moved over just to make sure I have a solid cycle on the new tank. Um, now, if you guys are going to check out this week's live stream, I actually have Aquabiomics coming on, so it should be a good one to kind of review the test results. So I did do the DNA testing on the tank. And yeah, it'll be really cool to have Eli on and go through it with him. Um, skimmer wise, I am still using my little DIY one on top. Now if we do look at the top, because it's pulled that off, uh, you can see the color changing. Most of it has turned to purple, so this media is starting to be exhausted. I do kind of give it a shake once in a while to mix it up. 
and adjust the channeling. Coming over to the other side, we got the AI Prime and the Fuge. Now, the top of the Fuge is getting pretty nasty. There is, I don't know if it's cyano, but there's a bit of kind of gunk getting on top. Uh, I'm kind of curious this happens to you guys. When it's underwater, it doesn't really seem to happen, but once it gets to the top of the water, I think it's kind of the lack of flow that builds up and kind of gives it. So it is time to harvest some of that Chato. I'm gonna basically just toss the top half and the bottom half is will be all the nice good stuff underneath. That and something definitely needs a bit of a cleaning. Next over onto the controller board. Um, I did replace the calcium reactor tube the other day. I did notice again that wasn't feeding quite as nicely. Pulled it open and the tube was getting fairly rigid. It's definitely been a while since I changed it. So a bit of a reminder, if you guys are using any continuous duty pumps, make sure you check your tubing once in a while. And you know, I generally would advise, you know, every four months or so, it's probably worth replacing it on something that's running 24 seven. Overall, coral-wise, things are starting to fill in quite nicely. There is many things I could definitely use a trim, especially if we come in looking at some of these guys. Stuff's so starting to grow pretty close together, so that is definitely going to have to trim some of these back pretty quick here. I've been toying with the idea, do I trim some of this out and do I put it in the lagoon tank and use that to fill it in and make it turn into like a nice tank quicker, or do I just go with new coral and use different species that I already have? So I've been kind of back and forth on that one. Um, there's a few that will probably make it in there, like kind of got the Hellfire Mini and a few other ones. And I really do love Milliporias, so maybe I will focus on that. Or maybe it'll just be a blend of everything. That's still, still kind of back and forth on that one. Another nice aspect of having the extra tank space is I have been pulling out a few things. Like I did have that big encrusting favia or whatever it was over here, which I did pull that one out just to free up a bit more sand bed space. Same thing with one of these guys. I had two of them there, I did pull out one. So I am gonna go through and tidy up a few more things in here. Um, I do miss seeing a bit of the white sand beds, so it'll be nice to regain a bit of that. Lighting wise, we do have the XR30s and there is five of them on a six foot tank, which of course is extremely overkill. Now, I, they're only running at 30% since I put them on. The extra 15s were running at around 80, 85%, I believe. So it just goes to show it's basically double the LEDs, right? So it's a lot of overlapping light that we get. So it was at 30% and I actually bumped it up today to 32%. So small little bump and I might slowly work it up a little bit and just kind of see what happens with the coral with a bit more par. But overall, so far, everything is happy and thriving. Um, I did show you guys, I believe, last update, but the rain balloon's really starting to grow up the wall. And you can see it's attached to the back wall in a few different places. So I think that's gonna be pretty cool over time as that grows off and sort of branches start coming out of it. Looking from the peninsula end of the tank, you do get some really cool reflections off the glass. Um, that's one thing I do kind of like actually, is if you look at this, it almost looks like a double tank in a way, or it looks super deep. I think it's some really cool looks just going off the reflections in the glass. and which kind of makes me want a super deep tank one day. So this is two feet, but it'd be really cool to have a three or four foot depth. It'd give you such a different kind of scape that you could do with it. So maybe one day in the future tank. Um, the other thing to note too, I get asked all the time, am I still using ozone? I definitely am. If you're looking at the back of the tank there, you know, it's crystal clear and you're looking six feet through water. So I am definitely a big fan of ozone just for how much clarity it gives you. All right guys, it is about one in the morning and I woke the fish up to film a quick update. So we're gonna keep this one a bit shorter. Um, it is the holiday season. I completely forgot about the video until the wee hours of the night. So I wanna give you guys something for tomorrow. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick update on the Waterbox 7225 Peninsula. And yeah, hopefully everyone had a wonderful holidays. All right guys, as always, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button if you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next update.